My day begins at the crack of dawn, just as the sun is rising over the gorgeous trees. The jungle is glowing, but the chirping and fluttering of birds create a tidal wave against the peaceful morning. Five years ago, I started living off the grid in a forest somewhere in Costa Rica. There's no cell service here or Wi-Fi, so I have had a friend transcribe what I would like to say to you. After years of living a normal city-dwelling life with family and children, I realized that I hated having a 9-to-5 job, working endlessly for no reason, being married to a witch, and basically killing myself every day with drinking and too much fatty snacks. Instead of doing what I probably should have done, I packed a pair of shorts, a shirt, and some shoes into a suitcase and left for work one morning, never to return. I didn't go into the office that day. Instead, I took off to the airport. I didn't know where I was going, but I had $5,000 in my pocket and hellish life behind me. There was no way I was going to want to do this for the rest of my life. I decided to fly to Mexico first. I stayed in a hostel in a not-so-good part of town, where I met some interesting folks, people that you probably don't want to meet in a dark alley. I took a bus to the tail end of Mexico and entered Guatemala. I didn't have anything to my name, but I eventually made it here, where I have staked my ground. If you look hard enough, you may be able to find little plots of land that are just right for one person. It took me several months of searching, but I ended up running into a couple who had several acres for sale. I didn't need all of that, but I offered to tend to the acreage if they'd allow me to build a shed and have a garden. At first, they were apprehensive. Of course, who wouldn't be when some strange man with three months of a beard comes up to you asking to basically take your land for no money? However, we eventually became very close, and my friend here is the same man who is transcribing this for me. Soon they let me build a small wooden shack for their property. They used me for more labor as they realized I was quite handy with a hammer. We built a chicken coop and set up a spot for farming. I have no neighbors except for the birds and the trees and the wild animals that could very well come and eat me at any moment. Does that scare me? Yes! But you know what scares me more? Going back to the life that I had lived before this, I don't miss my wife, and even though I miss my kids, I don't want to go back to how it was. I keep a photo of my children in a book. They were 7, 8, and 11 when I left. The oldest would be in his 30s now. I don't know where they think I am or if they think I'm dead. I don't care to find out. Some people may think that that's wrong of me, and I would agree. However, I'd rather be alone. You'd think that it would get lonely out here, but I've got my chickens and some goats, and my friend comes to visit every once in a while. If I absolutely have to go to the store, I'm happy to walk several miles or pick up a ride for my friend. It's so peaceful not to worry about my phone or my computer, bills, money, things that just don't matter in life. I know what you're thinking. My family matters. That's true, but in a different way. My children may not have me in their lives now, but I've been saving money for them for several years. Each one will receive a large chunk of change. Money doesn't solve anything, but if it helps them find their inner peace, then that's all that matters to me. Oh, and I forgot to tell you about the time that I got his wife pregnant, but that's a different story. What did you think of my story? Please like and subscribe for more.